dive for the Sharks yesterday at the Endeavour Field. And they nearly died of fright at the very first minute as the Roosters struck a heavy blow. Can he get the pass away? Yes, he can. Look at Stevie Morris. Morris for the corner. Morris. Oh, what a brilliant try. The East Dream start then became a brief nightmare. The Sharks bounced to a 6-4 half-time lead. It's still going. Away it goes to Speechley. Speechley racing for the line. Speechley's in under the post. An upset seemed on the cards early in the second half of the Sharks' hopes for the final five were well and truly alive. Back to Coleman. Coleman away to Ronnie Quinn. To Magor. Magor. Magor will score. What a try. Then Craig Salvatore in his very first full game in the top grade sparked the Rooster revival. Salvatore's almost there. Let's wait and see what the referee says. Referee says try. And Joe Light, despite still being plagued by a touchy left knee, showed the class that has made him one of the most feared backs in the world. Tory then had a big hand in the match winning try. Steve Morris ending the game in similar fashion to the way he began. Exit the Sharks in a seesawing battle. Morris has scored the try! And Manly and North always produce a titanic struggle no matter where the teams are on the Premiership table. And today was to be no different. The Premiership frontrunners Manly got away to a bright start. Picking up a loose ball, Des Hasler found willing support in O'Connor and Ronson for the Sea Eagles' first try. The pace of Dale Shearer then set up another manly four-pointer. Stuart Davis, who later left the field with injured ribs, did the finishing work, and it seemed it was going to be an easy day out for Fulton's front runners. <laughs> then the Bears decided it was time to strike back, and two tries in two minutes showed some glaring defensive problems in the manly side. But manly still enjoyed a 20-12 half-time lead. However, it wasn't long before the Bears were back on level terms at 20 all, thanks to this try by Ian French. But it seemed Manly were to be the team to finish full of running. Two tries in quick succession by Shearer and replacement winger Jeremy Tyson. The Bears, though, kept coming back. Two more North tries preceded this match winner by Mark Cannon. It was their sixth of the match, and their spirit today will send shockwaves around South Sydney Territory tonight with their crucial final round clash next weekend. And while North produced a big upset, nobody really expected Western Suburbs to cause too many problems for the Tigers. But the Bagpies, who have the final round by next weekend, had other ideas. The Wooden Spooners gave coach Steve Goshen a great farewell, with Trevor Cogger going over midway through the first half. West are out to make up for their contentious first round loss to Balmain and although being bustled off their game, the Tigers hit back through a try to John Owens and clung to an 8-6 lead at the half-time break. West's second try came from a Brett Clark kick, which John Elias regathered to find Brett Davis backing up and Western Suburbs were back in the ball game. Balmain had three tries disallowed, including this Phil Sigsworth effort near the final hooter. Referee Giles O'Donnell, who had a controversial match, judged that Sigsworth had been held up. His ruling clearly upset a number of the Balmain players. The final scoreline remained West 14, Balmain 10. And today's great weather attracted over 13,000 people to the Parramatta Stadium for the clash with the Eels and the Saints. And the crowd got its money's worth almost from the kickoff. Tony Chalmers showed great speed to totally outpace the St George defence for the first try after just 27 seconds of play. Saints reply came soon after when Robertson, Johnston and Flanagan showed good skills resulting in a neat St George four-pointer. However, Saints never really threatened the Eels, who raced in seven tries to three in their last home appearance of the year. The final score of 34 points to 16, the Eels victorious over the Dragons.